And you have it. The blessing rests on you. We just have, have to tap into the benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. Daily. But if you don't get into the book, you don't know what your benefits are. So, you know, they give you insurance and all that, and they, they give you this huge book. You're like, what do I need these benefits for? Well, guess what? If something happens, you start looking at a book and see what benefit do I need here? How do I need to use this thing? What do I need to do? And that's what God does with us. You're like, okay, what promise do I need to take? What, what promise do I need to understand? What promise? You know, the first one that I really, that's when PTL was on. No, way, I think it was back in the 70s. Isaiah 54, 17, I learned that because I was having so much stuff coming against me. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment and answer. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and it's righteous is of me, saith the Lord. I memorized that thing because I said every time something's going to come up, I was going to shut it down. You know what? It worked. Amen. Then I started beginning to use and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because at the time that I was bodybuilding, you know, and I needed the, the, I needed the strength. I need to encourage my own self. I can do this. Yes, you know? I, I can do this. You can do anything God would have you to do. And David had to strengthen himself for the work, and we are going to have to do it also. And it has to be by the Word of God because nothing. If the worlds were framed and formed, if we were formed from the Word of God, we're going to have to use the Word of God, speak the Word of God. By faith, then it shall be so. It's Numbers 13. But. We, we know the story about how Moses had sent out 12 spies. And we understand. I'm going to pick it up in verse 26. So you just get an over, overdraft of the flow where the Spirit of the Lord is taking you. Verse 26. And they went and came to Moses. They had already gone and come back 40 days to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Karen, Paran and Kadesh. And brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. They gave them that good report. Yes, you were right. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. We all know that there's more for us. We can even in our imagination imagine what God has for us in this life. And the riches and wealth and told whatever is laid for the heathen is coming to us so that we can increase the kingdom of God and also live lavishly or give it out however he wants to do because anything you have is God's anyway. He gave you just to use it on this earth. This is just a temporary trial to see who is going to serve him or not. And sometimes some of us have the worst of conditions, just like Job. Are you going to curse God and die or are you going to believe him? I'm not going to curse him. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to live, and I'm going to live larger. Because you know why? Job prayed for his miserable comforters, and he got double for his trouble. So that's a first thing. Start praying for the people that keep on bugging you. Just start praying for them. Call their name out. Say, God, I don't know what they need, but I bless them. But right now, in the name of Jesus, send back negative words. I cancel them, and the board them. They're not going to come against me. You know, if they continue... The Holy Spirit will begin to deal with them, convict them. But if they don't take heed, just like Ananias and Sapphira, they walked in and they both fell dead. So that's not on you, but whatever God does is what God's going to do because there's going to be many signs and wonders and miracles. And we can't help that. We don't know what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. So you have to lay to rest, forgive everybody, and know nothing's going to be held to your charge, but know you're going to walk out the word and the will of God. It's the will of God in Christ Jesus. Because sometimes the prophets of old, they came with a sword. He said, don't let them come now because they always got bad things to say. And whatever they say, it does happen. We don't want it like that. But a lot of times you're going to have to visit people and tell them, listen, I know for a fact God spoke to me in a dream last night. I, <coughs> brother, sister, aunt, tell them. See, I this is all my heart and you've got to know this. i got to tell you this. You can take it as for God or however you say it. However God tells you to say it, just say it. Don't even look at their faces. Yeah, you know, we were discussing this up. I think the other day. Or, yeah, the other day. That whatever he says, be bold about saying it. Because the more you speak God's word and not be bashful and ashamed, the more words he's going to give you to say. And then the more you have laid up. It's an eternal thing that you're doing right now, serving God, in the worst conditions. But they'll become the best conditions. He's going to give you for that trouble. Verse 27. And they told him and said, we came in the land where thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit 
of it. Here's the word. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, Zebedites, Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. You know, a lot of times that's like, we see the good of what God's doing, all of a sudden the enemy starts bombarding our mind. What about this? What about that? Oh, well, if I can't do this, I have to do that. You know, it's our mind that, that, that is being bombarded at this time. The enemy is, is placed in such a mindset on this earth that it's hopelessness. Just utter hopelessness. But God said there's going to be a way out. He's going to give you the way out in your mind. He's going to show you how it is through the Word. You'll be able to come out and take your own land. And that is in mind. Because that is your will. Verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. All of a sudden, Caleb gets in there. Before these raunchy things are being said, he wants to get in there and say, Come on, we can take this land. You have to muster up and say, I'm going to do this. This is about time that this is going to get done in my life. This is the time that I'm going to have the will of God and Christ Jesus for my life. Be like Caleb. Get up and say, I'm going to do it this time. God, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? And when? You know, I'm ready for it. But he says, okay, just be still today and wait in my presence. And all of a sudden you feel the Spirit of the Lord moving in your own home with you and speaking to you. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is awesome. You know, having that full relationship all day long, that's what he wants. He wants that communication, even in your jobs. Speaking to you so you can be speaking to people those good words of joy and peace. Even, even as you feel the rest, there's a peace that God's blanketing this meeting right now. There's a peace coming in to give you that peace, that inner peace. Drop in your spirit. Just let it drop in. Let it drop in. A lot of times, it seems like you go out in the spirit for a moment, and then he'll bring you to I, 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 that, I had my first experience when I got saved just a little child like that. I went out like that. I didn't even know what it was until I grew older and I began to allow myself to go. My dad used to call them Holy Ghost naps, where the Spirit would take me out and I would come back in. And it wasn't a sleep. It was, it was in the glory. It, it's the glory. It's the glory of the Lord that He actually yeah. consumes you with a fire. And He puts such a love in there. And nothing can quench that love. It, it keeps continually burning because really it shuts it up in your bones like Jeremiah says. I have got, and you have got fire shut up in your bones. Amen. Fire shut up your bones. Even if you would pass away and, and there would be a grave. He, they put something on there, they come alive. That's how much fire we have shut up in our bones at this last hour. Just like Elijah. You can run, run faster than Ahab and, and went up to the city before he got there and he was going by a chariot. There is so much that you're going to be doing. You're going to be triumphing over the enemy, the thought that he had you. But really, God was just setting you up for a miracle. That's what I love about the whole thing. God, it's a setup. It's a setup for the great escape. I love it. I love it. And that's why Kevin said, come on, let us go up at once and possess it. He wants you to go right up, right up now into that realm and possess in your mind, which is your will, that that you need right now, that that you desire. He has it for you, and it is so accessible because of the windows of heaven are open right now. Amen. And you just draw it right down. When you agree with what He wants for you, which is whatever you want. 